Ito. Probably to get away from the child. Hey, kitty. everyone now i know what you must be thinking another creature design video but you literally just did one well yes but i got some good feedback on that video and i also enjoyed making it so here we are i figured it's a win-win for the both of us and i gotta follow the inspiration but before we run out of sketch time lapse let's talk about what we're looking at like I said in the previous video, I used a random animal generator I made in Google Sheets to give me three, three creatures to mash up for this exercise. Those creatures were the griffin vulture, the caracal, and the kawadi. Unlike with the previous creature design, I didn't instantly have an idea for how I wanted to combine these animals. Um, as you can see at the very beginning of the sketch process, I started off with something very feline with just some feathers basically. Um, I was playing with going for a gliding animal, but ultimately the idea just didn't speak to me. The way I was approaching it was feeling more like a stitched together animal than something that was a true blend, so I moved on to another idea. I had intended to do several possible combinations for these animals before settling on one, but once I got to the second sketch, something just clicked. I ended up taking inspiration from the vulture for the long neck and based the head and body off the kawadi. There actually ended up being a lot more vulture influence on this critter than I had initially thought there would be, which surprised me because I usually shy away from birds. I'm not used to drawing them, so I find their features, especially the wings, to be a little intimidating to draw or incorporate into other creatures. This creature doesn't have wings or even feathers, but still, the vulture influence is definitely there. The caracal seemed to have the least influence on this design, which goes against my tendency to make the prettiest and or most familiar animals the most prominent, so go me for getting out of my comfort zone, I guess. I tried to make the animals combine most seamlessly in the head. The general shape was based off the kawadi. Um, the eyes and ears are from the caracal, and the beak is actually an attempt to mix the mouth and nose features of all three animals. I started off with the beak structure of the vulture and gradually added in little shapes and shading to mimic the prominent schnoz of the kawadi and the muzzle markings on the caracal. All these things combined, at least I think, made a unique beak shape, which I'm pretty pleased with. I'm really glad I didn't just slap on a plain vulture beak and call it a day. The longer fur around the neck is also vulture inspired, as well as the feet, obviously. Like I said before, the body is mainly based off the kawadi, although I did lengthen it a bit and try to incorporate a hint of the big booty thing caracals have going on. I got the impression this creature is very weasel-like in its movements, and I thought it would work best as a plantigrade critter. Since two of the animals are from Africa, um, I also, well, and also to contrast from the last creature, I decided to place this one in a warm savanna type environment. I think this creature would be both a scavenger and a predator, basically just getting food from wherever it can. I think it'd be about the height of a cheetah, probably not very formidable in a fight with larger predators. It strikes me as being wily and quick, and while not very strong, it probably would be capable of getting other predators away from kills just by annoying the absolute crap out of them. Initially, I thought this creature might be solitary, but now that I'm talking more about its behavior, it might work best in groups. Um, family groups at the very least, if not larger mobs that would allow them to work together to intimidate predators they couldn't take by themselves. I don't know about y'all, but I can see them being extremely noisy and energetic and all around just absolute goobers. I'm curious to know what kind of impressions or ideas y'all get from this thing uh, as far as its behavior though, so definitely let me know what y'all think. Name suggestions for this species are uh, welcome as well, because I have precisely zero ideas in that aspect. So 
So as far as the technique behind the piece goes, I went with my usual watercolor and colored pencil approach. I've been watching a lot of other artists work in watercolor lately and it's something I've been striving to get better at since the beginning of this channel. I'm finding that now I always plan pieces with watercolor in mind, which as a former digital artist is definitely a big change. Initially, I would barely touch backgrounds apart from just a wash of some random color, but lately I've been trying to challenge myself to work more on actual backgrounds. Especially in the context of creature design, I think it's important to give an impression of what kind of environment the animal operates in, so yeah, perfect opportunity to work on that. Now that I'm delving more into backgrounds with watercolor, I feel a little silly for being intimidated by them at first. It's a lot easier than I thought it would be, and I'm really enjoying the layering and textures and just everything about it is really fun and freeing. I like letting the color do what it wants in some areas and trying to add more distinct shapes in others. I think the combination of those two things just adds more personality and interest to pieces, and I don't know, I just love it. It's in a way, it's easier for me to do backgrounds in watercolor than it ever was in digital media. I feel like with the digital media, there's sometimes a pressure to go in really hard with details just because you can, and with all the tools at your disposal, it's easy to get sucked in and keep adding details and overworking things. With traditional media, it's not as easy to do that, at least in my opinion, especially with something that can have a mind of its own like watercolor. As far as my own experiences with digital versus traditional media, it's been easier for me to get the look and texture I've been chasing for my own style with, tra with traditional media. Um, I used to try and go big with my digital backgrounds, and I still never felt completely satisfied with them. I think traditional media has gotten me the closest I've ever been to the style of background I like for my own stuff, and it takes far less time for me to achieve. I'm looking forward to how I continue to develop this in the future because yeah, so far it's been a fun journey. Also, for some reason, this piece seemed to work especially well with a water- um, not the watercolor, the colored pencil. Um, I don't know what it is, but the texture it added was so pleasing and I'm really happy with it. I love how well these two media work together. Um, the precision you can get with the colored pencils is such a nice contrast to the looseness of the watercolors. And I don't know, it's just so much fun to use these two in the same piece. Getting a little off topic, but I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone for your support recently. I just hit 200 subscribers a couple days ago, and it might not seem like a lot to most, but to me it's a lot. I'm so grateful to everyone who's been commenting and liking the videos. It's been really helpful as far as the algorithm and also as far as my motivation to make videos. So again, thank you all so much. It means a lot to me that y'all are enjoying what I'm creating, and yeah, I'm hoping to continue improving my art as well as my recording setup to give you guys some more frequent and better quality content. This channel is definitely something Thing I wanted to do long term and y'all are helping me keep at it and it makes my heart happy as cheesy as that sounds. On that note though, I might be a little quiet as far as posting videos the next couple weeks because I have a big project planned for y'all. In the last video, I mentioned possibly starting a series on drawing the entire cryptid iceberg and well, I think I'm gonna do it. This is me putting it out there to y'all so that I'll be more inclined to make this happen. Um, I've been planning it for the last week or two, and I've already got the footage for one video to kick it off. Obviously, it's going to take a long time, probably a couple years to do the entire iceberg, but I think it's going to be fun, and to kick it off, I'm going to try and prepare several videos to post in a rapid succession. I'm intending to organize this series so that it'll work well in a playlist, so with that in mind, I think starting it off with several videos close together and then doing an entry once or twice a month after that is going to be the way to go. So since I'll be prepping several videos to start that off, to start that series off, I'm probably not going to post much, if anything, until I can get that project up and running. So I'm shooting for the last week of October to get that going. I might be able to pull it off sooner, we shall see. Um, after I get that started, I'll be working on that series as well as more random creature designs and whatever else strikes my fancy, so don't worry if cryptid art isn't your thing, there will be other stuff being posted regularly besides that. But yeah, I'm really excited about starting that series and putting my own spin on cryptids as well as researching these monsters to give some background info on them while doing the time lapse. Um, I'm hoping y'all will enjoy it as well. This is going to be the first big project I take on for this channel, and I'm 
both nervous and looking forward to it. So yeah, that's what's coming in the future as far as content. So we're about to wrap up this time lapse. Uh, I wanted to add in some clouds as one of the finishing touches, but I couldn't get my Posca pen to cooperate. So I ended up using some acrylic paint to quickly add those clouds in. I love the entire process of making this critter. Once I got that first little spark of inspiration, it all came together so nicely and I'm so pleased with how this animal as well as the piece itself turned out. There will certainly be more of these to come in the future and I hope y'all had fun watching this process. Let me know what y'all think about this critter and again, if you have any ideas for its behavior or a name for the species, do sound off in the comments. Thank you one more time for all your support and also thank you for watching this video. See you all in the next one.